So good evening, guys. Uh, short video here, hopefully. Um, I'm going to start getting into some of the things I wanted to start doing. It's actually one of the reasons I started this channel is some of the things I want to start doing. So I want to give uh, an explanation for a very simple sex-length mating. So what we have in the pen, we have a blue check cock. This bird's actually from Ralph Crespo over at RC Lofts. A lot of you guys know Ralph, one of his birds. Nice cock bird he sent me. Um, and we have an ash red. We have a red check hen. Now she is ash red, and, the, and that's the point I want to stipulate. If she is ash red, we know that birds are ash red, obviously, because they're red and they have ash covered flights and tails. This is one of my mini loft cats that go around here. They don't eat pigeons, but they always have to look. And he lives in the house quite a bit. So he's kind of more of a house cat than a loft cat. So, blue cock, ash red hen. Now, it doesn't, now one of the things I want to stress with this is that it doesn't matter whether the blue black cock is a blue check. It doesn't matter that he is blue barless. It doesn't matter whether he is a blue bar. It doesn't matter whether he is a true silver, which is dilute blue, be it checker or bar. It doesn't matter that he's an Andalusian. It doesn't matter that he is black. It doesn't matter that he is a blue with opal or toy stencil or any other modifiers, because those are, we have three different things working in pigeons. We have color, which is, we have three in pigeons. We have blue, we have ash red, we have brown. And that's it, when we talk about cover and cover and cover genetics in pigeons. Blue, ash red, and brown. That's it, there's no other cover, just the, those three. Now what we do have is we have patterns, like this, so we have checker, we can have bar, we can have barless, we can have T pattern, which is a, a variety of checker. Now, so we have pattern, and that's different genetics from your cover. Now, at the same time, we can also have cover modifiers. So, cover modifiers are dilute, opal, toy stencil, frill stencil, spread, indigo, recessive opal things of that nature. Those also don't matter in this. All that really matters is, is that your base color is blue and ash red. And in this case, what's important is that we have a blue cock and we have an ash red hen. Now, if you mate these two birds together, blue cock, ash red hen, regardless of the pattern, regardless of the modifier, we get from this mating, we will get ash red cocks and we will get blue hens. Time after time after time after time. If you think you've seen an exception to that rule, like say for example, you think you've made it a red check cock to a, a, a blue hen, and you think they all come out the other way, they do not. Um, anytime we get exceptions to genetic rules, it's usually a case of infidelity. Or in some cases, the hen could have been previously mated to a cock, a different cock, a month ago and still be packing semen from that cock. That does happen. It's much more prevalent in poultry than it is in pigeons. With poultry, you have to, in order to ensure who the father of a chick is out of a hen, you have to actually typically segregate them for almost up to eight weeks. Pigeons, not so much, but it, but it does happen. So if you do get exceptions to this rule, something's off. This is a good way to spot pedigree errors. You made a blue cock to an ash red hen of any type. Once again, regardless of the pattern, regardless of the modifier, if you get blue suns, there's something wrong. Um, if you understand these matings, if you're, uh, especially for you racing homer guys, if you guys shop at online auctions, you will see a lot of pedigree errors. You will see ash reds come out of blues. Um, that doesn't happen. You'll see blue cocks come out of 
blue cocks, red hens, doesn't happen. Not out of ash red. So needless to say, very, very simple mating. You can use sex length matings and there's several different types, but this is the most common one that's commonly used is the blue cock to the ash red hen to produce blue daughters, ash red sons. Obviously the great advantage of this is, is you can sex the offspring right in the nest. Once they start to feather, you mate blue cock, ash red hen. If you see a blue or black squab, it's a hen. If you see an ash red squab, it's a cock time after time. So it not only makes for spotting pedigree errors in pigeons that are pedigreed, which are largely racing homers and rovers for the most part. You don't see a lot of pedigrees in other breeds. Not that I've ever seen. Maybe the tip for guys might pedigree their birds. But it's mostly the, the racing homer guys and the rover guys pedigree their birds. So if you see, like I said, Blue sun from this sort of mating didn't come off that cock. It was a, it was a different cock bird. Um, so that's one benefit of it is you can spot pedigree errors. The other benefit is you can sex them in the nest. Now, and the other benefit is, let's say you have a, a nice, very important pair of pigeons in your loft. Sometimes you can use sex-linked sex matings in breed birds for stock. Maybe you need, from a mating like this, you really need sons of the good cock bird you have. But you don't necessarily need the daughters. You know, there's, there's some breeders, they, they do believe in the tail male line and the tail female line and mitochondrial DNA and stuff like that. So, I mean, there is sometimes some breeders that are... Uh, vary into the genetic side of it. Sometimes they only want hens from certain matings. Sometimes they only want cocks from certain matings. And a sex length mating like this is a, a really good way to produce pigeons from stock and be able to sex them in the nest and basically know exactly what you have opposed to waiting, you know, six or seven months until they sexually mature. Um, so I'll kind of give you an explanation of why it works, and I'll do it in as simple a language as I can for you. So here's the reason it works, and I'm going to kind of try to lay it out as, as simply as I can for you guys, because obviously most people, they don't, they don't want to process the big words and the, all, the, all the biology. Now, in pigeons, and also, also most birds, the females are what they call heterogametic and basically what that means is is that the hens have a diminished sex chromosome so they have a Z and they have a W and that W is what determines that it's a hen now if it's ZZ it's a cockbird I've got the house cats floating around. These guys aren't mating. That's, these guys are not mated. That's why they're not uh, bonded or anything and doing a little bit of fighting. So the cock has a ZZ and the hen has a ZW. Now the ZW, the W chromosome in the hen, which determines her sex, that's actually what's called a, a diminutive chromosome. And basically what that means is it's, it's partial. So it's, it's similar to what we have in humans, <coughs> you know, that in Human males, we have an XY, and basically what the Y gene is that determines sex of the male humans and most male mammals is it is a diminutive chromosome. Now, in the case of color, color is usually inherited on the sex chromosome. So because of that, if you made a, a blue cock to the ash red hen, his daughter's do not get a color gene from the mother only from him because there's only because she the, because the hens out of this mating and any mating they only have one one gene for color now they can have multiple genes for patterns in some cases they have multiple genes for patterns and sometimes they can even have a multiple gene for a, a color modifier but with color one gene only for pattern in the hens. What you see is what you get. Um, this ash red hen, 
she can't throw blues. Can't happen. She's not gonna. She did. She doesn't. She doesn't have a gene for blue. Um, same way, she doesn't have. She can't have a gene for brown. Both of which, by the way, are technically recessive to ash red. Now, because of that, any daughters from this mating, they only inherit the blue cover gene. And as a result, they're always hens. Now, by contrast, the cocks, they have that ZZ. They have both, chromo they have both fully intact chromosomes, so they have two genes for cover. So they're going to inherit one from the cock, which is blue, and they're going to inherit one from the hen, which is ash red. Now, ash red is dominant to blue, and that is why the sons from this mating are ash red. You'll notice most of them, they'll have some blue or black flecking in them. When you, when you do matings like this with the blue cock to the ash red hen, the sons will almost always have some sort of blue or black ticking in them. Sometimes brown ticking if he happens to carry brown because brown is recessive to blue. But generally, you don't see brown in most breeds. It's a rare color. You don't see it in rovers very often. You don't see it in racing homers. It's only a couple breeds you see it in that often. So needless to say, that is why we get blue hens, ash red cocks. So needless to say, very good tip for those of you who want to check out pedigrees of birds you might bid on on the auctions. Um, now it doesn't work the other way around. It only works for this mating. But if you do see blue cock, ash red hen, and for some reason you have blue sun, well, he's not the daddy, somebody else. Um, but needless to say, that's the way it works. You can use it for spotting pedigree errors, or you can use it just to sex your young birds in the nest. If you need, if you have a special pair together, and let's say you need only sons, if you make the blue ash red mating like this, blue cock, ash red hen, the blues are all hens, the ash reds are all sons. So if you need cock birds from a mating like this, maybe it's a special pair you managed to do, you know which ones to keep. You maybe sell the rest or just fly them or whatever it is you're going to do. But uh, anyway, thank you for turning, tuning in, guys. We're going to do more videos like this. I'm going to kind of try to figure out in the future how to do some charts and stuff like that and insert them in here. Um, that way you can maybe kind of see it more in a, a scientific explanation on paper. Uh, we'll work on that. But needless to say, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit subscribe. Hit like. See you guys later. Keep them flying.